Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Parts Talk. Today we will go into a video that has been making the rounds. You won't see this on mainstream news media outlet, which is why a platform like this one and mine exist. But for my podcast listeners, you can watch the full video on my YouTube channel. And before we begin, please hit that like button so you can be notified when I put more content out. If you find my topics informative and you will be notified when I drop a new episode, it'll only take you 1.5 seconds to do so. A friendly reminder that I may be the only channel and program that is that takes you beyond the sales department consistently. Others focus specifically on cars, their performances, look, style, features, and DIY videos from mechanics. Remember to grab a copy of my new ebook, The Parts Manager Guide Proven Strategies Used to Maximize Profits and Process Improvement. So, let's begin the video. The world is at risk. Countries, corporates, and citizens claim to be doing all they can to save the planet from climate change. Green energy is being floated as one of the top solutions. We are replacing coal with hydropower, fossil fuels with solar energy, petrol and diesel cars with electric vehicles. EVs are being pitched as cleaner greener and sustainable. But are they? What's clean for the environment may not really be clean. Hidden beneath the shiny exteriors of an EV is a story of blood batteries. These cars drive human rights violations, extreme poverty and child labor. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. An electric car runs on battery, you know that. But do you know what these batteries are made of? Rare metals like lithium and cobalt. Cobalt gives the battery stability and allows it to operate safely. It's a bluish gray colored metal. It is found in the Earth's crust or what we call crustal rocks. Cobalt has several uses like in jet turbine generators, tool materials, pigments and smartphone batteries. But its major use is in lithium ion batteries. Half of the cobalt produced goes into electric cars. We're talking about 4 to 30 kilos of cobalt per battery. This metal is found all over the world, like in Australia, Canada, China, Cuba, South Africa, the United States, the Philippines. But 70% of the total supply comes from one country, Congo, Congo. the Democratic Republic. And so everyone wants an electric vehicle, but they never imagine or fathom where the raw materials actually comes from to manufacture these cars. And... Uh, other things are these materials are used for, such as you know your cell phones, your PS5s, laptops, televisions, all the latest and best gadgets out there. So I mean, it's good to know exactly where these materials are coming from, and so much of the thing that we're living to enjoy in first world countries are being produced by people who have far less than we have to offer. Republic of Congo. Let's zoom into this country. DR Congo is the second largest country in Africa. Its GDP is around $49 billion. Congo is synonymous with conflict, poverty and corruption. Beneath the country's red earth is the world's largest deposit of cobalt. 92 million people live here. Some 2 million depend on cobalt production. They are called negociants. Cobalt mining in Congo is divided into two categories, industrial or large-scale mining and artisanal or small-scale mining. What's the difference between the two? Artisanal mines are unregulated. Labor laws do not apply here. Neither do safety protocols. These mines produce 20 to 30 percent of Congo's cobalt. Some 200,000 miners work in these mines. At least 40,000 of them are children, some as young as six. These children flirt with death. And of course, in order to keep the cost down, you know, large major corporations do things like these. I can't call the names, but of course, if you dig deep down, what they have is subsidiaries on top of subsidiaries on top of subsidiaries. So it's really hard to trace exactly where these raw, raw materials are coming from. Death daily. They enter vertical tunnels. Most of them are too narrow for adults to enter. Inside, it's like a furnace. The children dig for cobalt under inhuman conditions. Sometimes they have shovels, but mostly they dig with their bare hands. They have no masks, no gloves, no work clothes, and sometimes just 20 minutes worth of oxygen. But these young children go on for hours. After digging, they crush the rocks. They wash them and carry their finds to the market to find a buyer. How much do these children make? Sometimes as little as a dollar. 
Cobalt is a multi-billion dollar industry. It is estimated to be worth $13.63 billion by 2027. But this money never reaches a child who is spotting and extracting the metal. In poverty-stricken Congo, even a dollar is worth risking one's life. Many die trying to make this money. And it's actually good that we're seeing evidence of this coming forward, thanks to technology, of course. And as I mentioned, you will never see these on mainstream media outlets. Now, governments giving ultimatums for emission control while children are dying, well, African children. So it may not even matter because it's not taken seriously in the West here. Let's continue. ABC recently profiled a woman who lost her son to a mind-related accident. The boy was 13 years old. He told his mother he was going to the market to buy coal for her so that she could cook. Instead, the boy went to a cobalt mine to try and earn an extra buck for the house. The mine embankment collapsed. The 13-year-old never returned home. Between 2014 and 2015, at least 80 artisanal miners died in Congo. In 2019, an accident killed 43 miners. According to one estimate, 2,000 illegal miners die in Congo every year. Many suffer permanent lung damage, skin infection and life-changing injuries. In 2019, some families from Congo filed a lawsuit. They named companies like Tesla, accused them of aiding and abetting in the death and injury of children. The lawsuit spoke about a child. He was referred to as John Doe 1. John was working as a human mule since the age of nine. He would carry bags after bags of coal just for $0.75 a day. One day, John fell into a tunnel. Fellow workers dragged him out of it, but they left John alone on the ground. When the child's parents found out about the accident, they rushed to the mining site. It was too late. John was paralyzed. Doctors say he will never be able to walk again. Why do children work in these high-risk mines? Because of poverty and the hope to get out of it. Families in Congo are betting big on cobalt. It's like their crypto. Their chance to make it big. The metals demand has tripled in the last decade. It is expected to double again by 2035. The demand is being driven by electric vehicles. Well, of course, and um, the government, the various governments are pushing this without any form of regulation going into other countries, of course. Today, there are more than 6.5 million EVs on the road. By 2040, that number will touch 66 million. So that's 66 million multiplied by 30 kilos of cobalt. Do the math. By 2050, the demand for cobalt production is expected to increase 585%. Congo's family... And the link for this video will be in the description box below. I watched this once. I just went over it, but I thought it very important because this has to do with the industry that we're in which is the automotive industry and of course tesla is the most popular electric vehicle around today families want to ride this wave and tide over poverty sending their children to the mines is not a choice for them but necessity these children end up working as artisanal miners or informal workers they're not employed by any company but several companies line up to buy their fines you see, it is cheaper to buy cobalt from a child than a regulated mine. And who understands business better than China? Most of these companies dealing in blood batteries are from China. It dominates the global supply chain of cobalt. China owns up to 50% of the metals production. It controls around 80% of cobalt's refining. In the last 15 years, Chinese companies have... And the more things change, the more they remain the same. I remember a couple of years ago, there was this movie called Blood Diamond, which is basically where the the title comes from uh leonardo dicaprio Dijamon hansoon i'm sorry if i massacred his name but it was actually depicting part of a true story and part of what was going on in terms of you know um getting the diamonds out of africa into the hands of wealthy aristocrats in europe and it was it was a sight to behold that movie was actually sad it was a sad state have bought out north american and european companies mining in congo today chinese firms own 15 out of the 19 industrial mines in this country in exchange for congo scoble china has promised the country billions in investment in the form of infrastructure schools and roads now congo is another example of how stories featuring china never end well Today, China is leaking blood cobalt into the supply chain of electric vehicles. 
Chinese companies are buying cobalt from children, encouraging them to participate in the trade of blood batteries. One of the largest cobalt processors in Congo is a company called CDM or Congo Dongfang Mining. It is a subsidiary of Zhejiang Huayu Cobalt, a Chinese company of course. Huayu supplies cobalt to electric car makers like Volkswagen. 40% of Huayu's cobalt comes from Congo. In 2016, the Chinese company was called out by an NGO. It was branded a benefactor of child labor. Huayu pledged to clean up its act. But did anything change on the ground? Reports raise serious doubts. This is one part of the story. There is blood in China's large-scale mines too. There, workers are abused, discriminated, beaten and made to work without contracts and sufficient ration. One worker told the media, and I'm quoting, if a worker dies, the Chinese don't report it to the government. They bury the person hiding the corpse. And this is the 21st century, and these things are still happening. But to go back to parts, sometimes I would look at parts in the warehouse when I was working inside our large dealership warehouses, and I wondered where all these raw materials came from to to manufacture the parts because when I sometimes when I looked at the boxes I'd see made in Thailand, made in Cambodia, made in Taiwan, made in Singapore, made in India, Bangladesh, etc. And it also begs to reckon where did all these materials come from to manufacture these parts? Obviously there must have been some environmental impact happening somewhere out there at that time and it manifesting into what we're seeing now in terms of emission control and everything. Now, you're moving away from plastic and you're going back to paper, but again, what about the trees? So there's always going to be a cause and effect of something happening around us. Let's continue. And bribe the family to keep quiet. That's your electric car killing people even before it hits the road. Did you sign up for this? The world's biggest car makers are complicit in these crimes. I'm talking about the likes of Tesla, Volvo, Renault, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen. They all source cobalt from Chinese mines in Congo. Sure, they claim to have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to child labor, but they too know that there is no way to fully map their supply chains. Back in Congo, President Felix Chishikedi has pledged to act. In 2019, he established a state-run company to focus on health and human rights. But that hardly helps when Congolese officials are accused of overseeing child labor. In 2020, Tesla announced it would start using cobalt-free lithium-ion batteries in its electric vehicles. But the company followed up the announcement with a deal with Glencore. It's a cobalt mining company. And this deal was for 6,000 tons of cobalt a year. 6,000 tons a year. Doesn't add up, does it? Much like the claim of electric cars being clean, these cars run on dirty energy, on blood batteries. And this is not climate solution. This is human rights abuse. And the two cannot coexist. Clim and it goes back again, cause and effect. Cause and effect. So Tesla says one thing, they hire a subsidiary company to handle the dirty work and the, the cycle continues. Climate solution is not supposed to be at the expense of human lives. Long story short, electric vehicles have miles to go before they can claim to be clean. So, before you think about that fancy new electric vehicle you'd like to own, please remember this video. Remember to smash that like button on your way out and subscribe so you will be notified. Let's start the conversation below. Until next time.